hear them fear not. Can you say with me, I refuse to fear? Never, ever, ever succumb to fear. The Bible actually discourages fear. Except by faith, no man can please God. That's why we must never, ever, ever succumb to fear. Just do what the Lord has asked you to do and walk in wisdom. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from wherever you are. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we rise up on our feet? First, I want to thank my man of God for giving me this opportunity to lead into this prayer. Right now, we're going to be praying as we open this service today. And we're going to be taking a scripture first from 1 Timothy chapter number 2 verse 1 to 4. And it says, I exalt therefore that first of all supplication, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. Also, from the Passion Translation, can we go there? Most of all, I'm writing to encourage you to pray with gratitude to God. Pray for all men with all forms of prayer and request as you intercede with intense passion and pray for every political leader and representative so that they will be able to live tranquil and undisturbed lives as we worship an awe-inspiring God with pure hearts. It is pleasing to our Savior God to pray for them. He longs for everyone to embrace his life and return to the full knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. Right now, we're we're going to be praying in line and in accordance to the scripture. For We're going to be praying for all men in all nations. For the salvation and the deliverance from the coming judgment reserved for those who reject Christ. We're going to be proclaiming the salvation, righteousness and the spread of the gospel in all nations to the glory of God. Let's begin to speak in other tongues. The Bible urges us to pray for all men. Begin to speak and intercede for all men. Rekebonde <laughs> Rekebonde <laughs> 
four men knowledge and a skill in both books this is from message translation in both books and understanding in addition Daniel was gifted in understanding all sorts of visions and dreams at the end of the time set by the king for their training the head of the royal staff brought to them into Nebuchadnezzar where the king interviewed them, he found them far superior to all other young men. None were a match for Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And they took to their place in the king's service wherever the king consulted them on anything, on books or on life. He found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his kingdom put together. Hallelujah. Right now, we're going to be praying especially for our brethren that the Lord is making room for us, giving us access, grants our expectation and bringing to us moments and place of opportunity in line with this, with his word this year. Each of us is alert and sensitive to seize the moment standing out from the crowd equipped and ready to take position and occupy our place we're declaring that for every assessment pre-qualification our brethren are 10 times better than standard exceptional irreplaceable and indisputably preferred for for the job position and locations whatever they are in pursuit of let's begin to speak in other tongues for our brethren he has imbibed in us excellence ten times better than our superiors in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever we have our hands prosperous in the mighty name of Jesus. Rakali 
John chapter number 6 verse 12 and it says where they were filled he said unto his disciples gather up the firmaments and remain that nothing be lost Luke chapter number 10 verse 1 it says after all these things the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Also, verse 17 of the same chapter, and it says, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils were subject unto us through his through thy name. Hallelujah. Right now, we're going to be praying for our upcoming program, Reach Out Australia. Hallelujah. We're praying and declaring an influx of souls into our churches in Australia, be it in Victoria, South Australia, Philippines, hallelujah. We're declaring that there are, there's a revival amongst our brethren and our brethren are stirred up to take full, rest, full advantage of every soul winning opportunity, hallelujah. To win and disciple the souls on the streets, our, our workplace, even our sphere of contact. And we're gathering in a great harvest of souls into our churches. Let's begin to speak in other tongues. Kibo Santa Kabalaba, Kiba Shata Kabalabos, the HD Kibaraba, Ragabalabos, the HD, Rogabalabos, or the Hosh Takabarabanda, Rose in the Hedeba Hashta Kabarabana, Ragabali Kabarabos, the HD Kibaranta Kabarabos, the Ragabalabos, and the Hosh Takabarabanda, but a boss in the Hed, Rakabalabos, and the Hosh Day, Rabali Kabarabana, but a boss in the Hed, Kibarabana, Kobos in the Hed, Kibarabana, but a boss in the Hed, Kalibos and the Hashta, Rakabalabos in the Hed, Kibarabana. Rogobolabonsa <laughs> Begin to give him praise, give him thanks, glorify his holy name. Father Lord, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. Hallelujah. Right now, we're going to be taking a confession. And you just repeat after me. Hallelujah. This is my year of gathering clouds. This year, the clouds will be full and, be, and begin to empty upon the earth. This year, the clouds of prayer, faith, and expectations will be full and empty themselves. This is the year in which prayers that I have prayed the faith that I have expressed 
my expectations that I have already risen upon the clouds of God, they will empty in answers. They will pour out in answers. My cloud of prayer, my cloud of faith, and my cloud of expectations are full and emptying out. It is my time of harvest. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right now, we're going to be welcoming Elma to lead us in praise and worship. Hallelujah. Smile. 
celebrate the name of Jesus. Glory to God. You look excited. Glory to God because you're celebrating the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Your creator and your maker. Praise the Lord. And it's Rhapsody time. Rhapsody time is blessing time. It's a time you listen to the reality of the word of God. Rhapsody of Reality is written by our man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris Oyakilome. Praise God, our special, special man of God. And today is Sunday, the 16th of January, 2022. Praise God. Please, I would like the Rhapsody to be put on screen if that's possible. Praise God. Oh. The theme scripture is taken from Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 29. Praise the Lord. You know, one thing special about the Rhapsody, Pastor has told us this year, you have to read it out. You have to read the word of God out. The one that is in your spirit is just there. It makes you righteous. But if you want it to have a power and a potency, you have to read it out say it out shout it out glory so today we'll just read the theme scripture together praise god and it reads the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy yeah they have oppressed the stranger wrongly ezekiel chapter 22 verse 29 praise god they have robbed those that have not, do not have knowledge. But thank God we are full of the knowledge of the word of God. This earth belongs to the Lord. We are the ones operating it. Praise the Lord. We are the ones who say it and it comes to pass. Whatever we say today in this service, it will come to pass. If we want to stop the operations of the wicked, what we need to do is say it and we mean it. Because this world is the world of our father. He gave it to us. Are you the seed of Abraham? He gave this world to you. Praise the Lord. You have to dominate it by the words you speak. Praise the Lord. Glory. All right. Pastor says one of the reasons judgment will come on the world is the injustice and oppression that's prevalent in different nations today. You will find organizations, agencies, and even governments enacting policies that oppress their people. They use regulations to crush and further impoverish the already poor and needy in their society while creating opportunities for themselves and for their allies. Praise the Lord. Does it sound like what people have been experiencing recently? Not you. Because you're, you, the kingdom you operate is not the kingdom of this world. You know? That's why we are bringing many. We are preaching the gospel, bringing many into the kingdom. Because what affects others don't affect us. Glory to God. We, 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 Pastor says we operate by a different set of rules. So we are so mindful, we are conscious of what we know and what we carry. We carry God in us. He created this world and gave it to us. Praise God. So we have to use all that he gave to us to rule this world, dominate it and reign. Praise God. Hallelujah. So whatever others are suffering, we are not. Praise God. So that's why we are preaching the gospel every, in every available means to bring many to this understanding that the life God has called us to is a life of reigning only. Domination. Praise the Lord. Setting men free from the bondage of sin, lack, glory to God. So when men are cast down to us, there is a lifting up. We only live on the word of God. Praise the Lord. Can we continue? Can we have it on screen? Praise the Lord. 
And pastor says, for some, this problem is merely a political issue. But we know from the scriptures that it's more than just politics. It's spiritual. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah how the evil spirit is responsible for the impoverishment of many nations in the world today. And, it, and in the book of Isaiah chapter 10, verse 13 to 14, it says, I removed the boundaries of nations. I plundered their treasures. Like a mighty one, I subdued their kings. As one reaches into a nest, so my hand reached for the wealth of the nations. As people gather, as people gather, abandoned eggs so i gathered all the countries not one flapped a wing or opened its mouth to chip wow praise the lord so these things that are happening are all, what's already written in the scriptures where they are telling you that it's going to be a one world government we are going to take all that you have in 2030 you will have nothing, but you'll be happy. For us, we own this world. Glory to God. They are telling it to the masses. We do not belong to the masses. Praise the Lord. We belong to a special kingdom where we rule, where we reign in Christ. Hallelujah. And so when this consciousness is in us, we cannot but win. We cannot but succeed. Praise the Lord. So as many as are hearing the scriptures, their hearts will be open to understand that God has already given us this land, this world, praise the Lord. And you know, Jesus is coming to rule this nation with us, this world with us, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why all this struggling you're seeing, because they know that the coming of Christ, the soon coming King, is already at the doorstep. That's why they are struggling. But their struggling is for not, nothing. Praise the Lord. We will prevail. We will reign. We will rule. We have a mindset of the righteous. We are bringing many into the kingdom by giving them salvation. Praise the Lord. That's what we are doing at this end time. We are not those struggling to find food to eat. Praise the Lord. Or close to where? No. We do not belong to the masses. Tell yourself, I do not belong to the masses. We are doing our father's business. That of bringing many. Say it, that of bringing many into the kingdom. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. I hope I'm not preaching. Praise God. Just, let's just listen to pastor. Glory to God. Pastor says, many ignorantly suppose that the downward trend Praise God. That the downward trend in their economies is due to market forces. But the Bible makes it clear who plundered their wealth. That's why we must keep praying for the nations. So that instead of oppression and injustice, there will be peace, godliness, and honesty. He knows this is possible in our day. That's why he asks us to pray. Let's exercise our authority and dominion in Christ over the nations. We are the only ones that can free the nations. Wow. The Bible says the whole creation is in, is in groaning, expecting to be set free, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Wow. Romans chapter 8 verse 19. We have the authority in the name of Jesus to turn things around in the nations. So use the name of Jesus against these demonic powers and break their hold and influence. Declare by, praise God. Praise God. And de declare by the Spirit the power of righteousness upon the leaders and your community. The leader, 
declare by the, by the spirit the power of righteousness upon the leaders of your community, city, town, nations, or organization where you work in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you see your responsibility. Did you recognize your responsibility as you were reading the Rhapsody? Our responsibility is in, to install God's righteousness and salvation in the nations of the world, starting with our, where you are. Praise God. And for us is the nation of Australia and in Victoria. Glory to God. Hallelujah. At this point, I would like for us to take the confessions together. Praise God. So the confession we're going to be, you read it after me. Glory to God. I declare that the gospel has free course throughout my nation. And the righteousness of God is established in the land and in the hearts of men. The word of God prevails in this country. Yes. Can we say that again? <laughs> Praise the Lord. The word of God prevails in Australia. Wow. Leading to a greater harvest of souls into the kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Begin to speak in other tongues and thank God for the word that has come to you. It came to you to enlighten your spirit and for you to remind you about your responsibility in Christ. Sabaya, Zorobo Shanta, Rako Sotabaya, Ligabaya Shanta, Rakoski, Mali Branda Ha Seti, Kebale, Ma Santa, Raka Seti. Rako Sokale, Rabaya, Raka Zonta, righteousness is prevailing in this nation, the nation of Australia in the name of Jesus, the city of Melbourne in the name of Jesus, Sako Sata, we use the name of Jesus over this nation, we speak the word of God and we declare that the works of righteousness that we produce is reaching many hallelujah so kale father we thank you lata kabaya label we cut off the influence of the wicked one and his cohorts from the nation of australia in the name of jesus roshakataya labaya lege city we thank you for the words we speak carry power sakatabaya le city so is it to the nation of australia in jesus name we pray amen praise the lord at this time we'll be listening to a promo praise the lord and after that a talk show stay tuned reach out australia is here we're reaching out to the nation of australia with rhapsody of realities we're reaching out with the word of god we're reaching more for Jesus Christ. It's time for us to reach out. Glory. Glory. Wow. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? Reach out. Hallelujah. We just want to thank uh, the men of God just to give us this opportunity just to talk about reach out. Hallelujah. Right. Reach out. Hallelujah. A big day. Hey, brother Josh. Yes, it is. Yeah. Tell us about it. When is happening? Reach out. Reach out in general. Most of you will ask what it is. Uh, the promo might have just given us um, just a little insight. But um, I'll just give you uh, uh, what it is. It is um, an evangelical campaign which is geared towards reaching out to lost souls and reconciling them to christ hallelujah it's also um, a time where we propagate uh, the spirit of patriotism uh, amongst um, uh, australians hallelujah thank you so much brother josh hey you do know what today's rhapsody the confession 
He's just telling us what we are meant to do as Christ, as love world children. Hallelujah. This, you know, the, the word of God prevails in this country. Lead to greater harvest of souls into the kingdom. So this is what we are going to be do, doing on this particular day. Hey? Yes. This is, uh, this is a unique day. Um, the actual date is on the 26th of uh, January, which is some days from now. Hallelujah. And um, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be reaching out with our messenger angel. Hallelujah. Which is Rhapsody of Realities. And um, this time it's going to be different. The, the world today has instilled fear. Um, if you go to every door or every, every area, you're going to see something called a QR code just at every post. But right now, um, which most times, I guess most persons will go there and like, oh, no, uh, they want to put this. And, uh, but we are reaching out the same way, but with a life-giving message, which is our rhapsody of realities. So, on, uh, and it is instilled on us, just um, at the back of us. Can you just... As you can um, tell, on the back of the t-shirts... Yes. We're going to log in, brother. Yes. We're going to log in, sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People are going to log in yeah. and they're going to know. Who are they going to know? Who are they going to know? Come on, brother. Can you yes. log in? So it's just, um, just like this. And it appears on, on the page just simply like this. Hallelujah. You see? And it has inside of here a wonderful message. Also, with our messenger angel, free copy where you can download it and have that copy and read it up daily for your blessing, for your uh, daily upliftment. Hallelujah. And as you can tell at the bottom, there is space for someone to fill in their details and contact details so that we can follow them up. As much as you do when you log in, when you get into the shops, they follow you up. So we're going to do the same. We're going to follow up on whoever logs into our, into our system right here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As members of Love World Australia, Melbourne here, we need to get involved. So how are we going to get involved? It is, it is very, very simple. Um, this is one day that I will say, um, this is January and also the start of the year, reaching out with um, and running with our my, uh, the message being given by a man of God. Hallelujah. What we should do first is, um, what I'm going to say is clear your schedule. Get that day free because we're going to be using that day to evangelize. We're reaching out to, to people so you get that day cleared up. I know most of us are busy. We want to take um, a whole lot of shifts that day, but this is one day set aside for us to reach in our people. So we could just um, clear that day. Next, Get yourself one of the t-shirts available in church. Um, uh, also, we're going to be giving big for this. It's a program. So where, where a whole lot of things are going to be happening that day, not just we going out, um, but also in church, a whole lot of things will be going on. The, there will be the live studio up running. Pastor will be anchoring so you can call in and things like that. And also... Um, uh, we're going out to various locations. So the more uh, people we are available, the more areas we can cover. We need to cover our sphere of contact. Today's Rhapsody was just awesome. It just told us everything that is about uh, reach out and what we, were, what we are supposed to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Even the word of God in Matthew 28, it, it, Jesus clearly says, um, now, wherever you go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to faithfully follow all that I have commanded you. Hallelujah. So we are mandated by the word of God to go and make disciples. Hallelujah. We usually go alone, but this time we are going as a family, as a nation. Hallelujah. We are going together. We're going to bring people to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And um, Asha's have got a special brochure for us uh, that we're going to uh, disperse as we go around. Even uh, 
wherever we are going. Hallelujah. Ashes, if you can just give each member of, um, of Love World these brooches. Hallelujah. And at the same time, as we were talking about how we get, get involved um, with this special day, these t-shirts um, for, for every member of Love World, if you want, well, if you want, we need to have these t-shirts hallelujah Praise we're gonna dress up in these t-shirts the the reason being is they are special this year hallelujah the qr code yeah we want them to log in hallelujah we want them to to, to be a part of this this space hallelujah so the t-shirts they are going for about uh, 20 20 to 30 dollars so if you can see your cell leaders or you can see one of us the reach out committee and uh, deaconess caroline at the back there thank you so much god bless you Brother, we are out. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Just rise up to your feet as we worship the Lord. Manta Kalabashanta Rekadoshatalabasante. Just lift your hands to Jesus. Manto Koja Liga de Sakatara Basunta Mante Kila Basota Ligradosa La Basete Kila Basanta Rakadosha Katala Basenteva Only He deserves the lifting of your hands. It is a sacrifice to Him. Mante Kila Basunda Make professions, confessions unto His name. That is your, the fruit of your lips, giving thanks. Thanks to him, Manta Calaba City de Gadi. Oh, Bashanta la Bayada da City de Baya. The Basson Talabayan Talabaya. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. With our hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving. Lord, I give you praise, singing glory, glory, I exalt you. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, Lord, I give you praise, singing glory, glory, hallelujah. Lord, I give you praise, singing glory, glory.
Master For your glory, for your honor, for your grace, for your love, for your peace, for your kindness, Lord Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord We worship you, O Lord We worship you, O Lord we worship you, O Lord. Baro sabariga bara bahaya. Balabo shata liga bara bahaya. Balibo sata lama lege bosahaya. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We worship you. We honor you. Hallelujah. 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 Can somebody shout glory? Can somebody shout glory? Just go around this morning and say something nice to a few people around you. Let's move about. Bless someone with some words of grace. Bless someone. Tell the person you look wonderful. You look lovely. You're amazing. I see the grace of God in your life. I see the beauty of God in your life. I see grace, increase grace, grace. Oh, lege bosata rabahaya, bagabaya. you for all you do in his kingdom leading our praise and our worship unto God that's why I said to you that all of you you are leaders in the house of God once you are a music minister you're automatically a leader in the house of God likewise when you are in a department in the house of God you're a leader you're an usher Leader. And so your spiritual involvement in leadership is very important as well as your physical involvement. Because you win in the spirit first before you win physically. Life is spiritual. A man of God has told us that over and over again. You can't win physically if you haven't won spiritually first. And so we start our winning from the realm of the spirit especially when we pray and then when we praise and when we worship now, that's why pastor said we're going to have praise services this year hallelujah yeah, ma'am i hope you're getting ready yeah, pastor said it he said not only are we having praise service tonight with him which will be transmitted on all our networks but also we too should have praise services when we just gather together, as we've had before, where we just gather together and we just praise God, we just worship Him, you know, not much preaching of the word, but just praise, just worship, just praise, just worship. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're going to be doing in heaven. There's not going to be any prayer there. There won't be any opportunity to start praying and other things. There's no request. What, are you, what, are, what, are, what request are you making in heaven? There's no request there. You know, there's no, nothing else doing except just to glorify God, to praise him, and to carry out whatever assignments that the Lord gives you to carry out. Hallelujah. Praise God. Last week I told you we are in a new dispensation. And there were two things I remember mentioning to you. Hallelujah. Oh, but before then, let's just make our declaration together. Come. Can you just rise up on your feet? Let's make a few declarations together. Hallelujah. Can you just repeat after me? Say, my life is full of glory. My life is full of grace. I am winning always. I shine always. I am up and nothing can bring me down. I make progress 
and nothing can bring me back. I go upward and forward all the days of my life. And I am reaching more people for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. We may be seated. Praise God. So this year, we're going to be making declarations like this. We are, our words are very powerful. Our words are very powerful. And when we come together as a church to make such declarations, they are powerful declarations. Those are the declarations that have changed nations across time. Those are the, the declarations that brought the Roman Empire down. Those are the declarations that throw light into a nation that would have otherwise been in darkness. Those are the declarations that would turn Australia around for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can somebody say amen? amen? Yes, these are the declarations, the declarations of the saints. And so last week, I remember I told us, first and foremost, when you've, as you've entered into this new dispensation, you need to start by dropping old baggage. That was the first thing I mentioned last week. And who can help us with the second one? Listen to the voice of God. So first of all, you've got to drop old baggage. Old baggage. When you get into a new level, you drop old baggage. Sometimes those old baggage are baggage of character, a lifestyle, a way of speaking in times past, you know? It's one of the things when we get born again, you know, when you first come into Christ, one of the first things you learn is how to talk. Your language begins to change. You know, previously you could have said some things about yourself, you know, little old me, I'm just trying, you know, I, I, sometimes life is up and down. You know, gradually you start finding yourself correcting yourself. When you say life is up and down, something tells you inside you are lying. And then you begin to say, mm, life is up and up. You know, you start, you start correcting yourself. Formally, you, you, you know, you say, ah, <clears throat> you know, I, sometimes I get so sick, so, so sick. Now you start, when you say such things, something will tell you inside you. Mm, mm. Then you change the language. You say, I'm so healthy, so, so healthy, healthy, healthy. You know, because you are dropping old baggage. Hallelujah. You're like that butterfly that is about to jump out of its cocoon. Glory to God. You have metamorphosed. It's a new level. So you drop old baggage. You know, when, when you just become the CEO of a company, let's assume you were the gate man of a company, and then you used to greet everybody, sir, sir, good morning, good morning, good morning. And somehow you just landed and became the CEO. You can't start greeting everybody, good morning, good morning, good morning anymore. You've got to change. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you say with me, I'm metamorphosing? I'm yeah, you got to change. You got to change. So it's a new level. It's a new dispensation. It's a new dispensation. So you drop old baggage. And sometimes those old baggage are people. Sometimes they are people. Sometimes they are people who, have, who, who drag you down. Associations that you have been with in times past. You know, sometimes you've got to just drop them. You know, just let them go. Sometimes, you know, even they will... They will they will even start dropping. <laughs> they will start dropping themselves when they notice the changes that are happening in you. They will begin to drop. Sometimes, you know, you find that person that would normally come around and just hang out and will help you to waste five hours of your day on discussions that make no progress whatsoever. The person comes now and spends only 30 minutes and says, ah, why do you, that? you are just quiet. You are just quiet. And then from quietness, the person no longer comes person has departed hallelujah sometimes you've got to drop all these old friends and old associates etc because you are a king now you've come into a palace you've come into a new level of glory hallelujah and while you are doing that remember I, I, and I, this, this takes me into something i'll i'll take you into probably next week if we have the opportunity i'll begin to take you into that in this new dispensation, while we have entered into a new dispensation, the world are also in a new dispensation. Theirs is a dispensation that is very different from us. Completely different. And one of the characteristics of their dispensation is a head mentality. They have a head mentality. So, 
Everybody seeks, you know, like you hear people say, don't take the vaccine for yourself. Take it because of others. Head mentality. Modify your speech. Don't say male or female anymore. Why? Because you don't want to offend the person next to you. Head mentality. That's the direction the world is moving into. Say head mentality. So create a new race of people. Vaccinated individuals. Head mentality. Glory to God. My vaccines are from the Holy Spirit. I've told you before. Glory to God. I'm, vac I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not only one or double or triple jabbed. I am eternally jabbed. I get a constant dose. That's what the Bible says. Infilling of the Holy Spirit. Continuously filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm always jab, 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 jab. I've been jabbing since I got born again. I'm still jabbing now. I'll still be jabbing unto eternity. Hallelujah. I jab the word of God. I jab the spirit of God. I jab the goodness of God. I take a hold of all these things. That's why sickness has no place in my body. Hallelujah. Has no place in me. No matter the fears that the world have, that don't come near me. Because I'm fortified. Hallelujah. Fortified. So don't join the head mentality. I told you, when you find a mass of people, remember the heads. The, uh, one of the heads the Bible told us about. <laughs> in scripture, that's why. They were filled with demons. And where were they running to? To their destruction. They were all moving. And if any animal was there that had a head mentality, the animal seeing all of them running in that direction would have also run, to run, run down the cliff. So when you see the mass of people moving in a particular direction, step back. Say, Lord, is that the direction for me? And if God tells you, mm -mm, my child, don't go that way. You sit back and you are let them go. Doesn't matter whether it's all the family members that run that way. Sometimes you can have in your family, everybody has gone in that direction. That doesn't mean you have to go in that direction. Glory to God. You go with the word of God. Hallelujah. You go with the word. So don't, don't join the mentality in trying to please everybody. Because people are doing this, therefore I have to do it. Because people are saying this, therefore I have to say it too. Because people are dressing this way, therefore I have to dress that way. Because everybody is driving this kind of car, therefore I have to drive that kind of car. That's not the life you ought to live. You are unique. God made you unique. No two human beings on this earth are the same. You are absolutely unique. Glory to God. So don't drop your uniqueness to begin to look for a way to please the world. The Bible tells us not to do so. I'll show you a few scriptures. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23. Don't try to please the world and join the head mentality. Colossians 3 verse 23. Bible tells us that everything we do should be and whatsoever you do, he says, do it heartily, joyfully, as to the Lord and not unto men. So anything you are doing, do it joyfully to the Lord, not to men, not to try and please men. Not a scripture, Luke chapter 6, verse 26. Show you more. These ones, this is the word of Jesus. Jesus said, woe unto you. When all men, and these are the very words of Jesus, said, Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Everybody talks so, I mean, in your working place, everybody talks so nice of you. In your school, everybody talks so nice of you. In your family, everybody talks so nice of you. I mean, nobody says anything, nobody, I mean, nobody says anything wrong. I mean, you are just... You are, everybody talks so nice about you. So nice about you. This is a nice lady. A nice man. Everybody, everybody just says nice things about you. The Lord says something must check yourself very well. Something must be wrong with you. Glory to God. I hope I haven't started offending anyone this morning. I, look, look, put it up, put it up, put it up. Don't take it away. Uh, it's not the words of Pastor Tony. It, this is the words of Jesus. The Lord himself. Say woe unto you <laughs> when all men shall speak well of you. No, everybody just likes you. They just say nice things about you. Cool guy, cool. Because that means you have not yet started showcasing the glory of God. 
The day you then talk about Jesus in that working place, there must be somebody who will say something nasty. That means you're, you're not you're, you're showcasing God's glory yet. You haven't started talking about Jesus. The moment you now open up your mouth in that place to say, Oh, I'm a Christian and I believe Jesus is Lord. <laughs> That's when the shifts reduce. Even if it doesn't reduce, at least somebody will begin to say something nasty about you. Definitely someone will. No, in your family, everybody just thinks you are nice and you are cool and you are just calm. That's because you haven't yet, you are not yet on fire for Jesus. The moment you start telling them about Jesus, Jesus is Lord, and you start preaching the Bible, they will ask you, are you the only person in this family? There are others who have been praying before you were born. So now you've offended someone. And somebody's got to say something nasty about you. Hallelujah. Oh, husband and wife, everything just cool. You guys are just, you know, just moving, moving, moving. That's because none, of, none among the two of you is waking up in the middle of the night to pray. By the time one person starts speaking, kabashing in tongues, while the other person is trying to sleep, mm, something must be said. Glory to God. I'm not trying to put fire into your home. I'm just telling you that life can be sweet. When people say nasty things about you, then you know you are, you, definitely you are doing something right. Jesus. They said terrible things about him. And the Bible says, as he is, so are you in this world. So how can you be trying to please everybody? I don't want to offend this person. I don't want to offend that one. I don't want to offend, you know? Doesn't mean you go about offending everyone, but get ready to offend some people. Hallelujah. Even your posts on social media can offend some people. Did Israel for loud mention anybody's name? No. He just said, he just made a clear declaration, a statement of faith. And put it out there. And for that, the head, they made, they, those that had the head mentality suddenly jumped up. Ah, no, 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 no. You can't be, you can't be, you can't be, you can't be that, you can't be, you can't. They just tried to pull him down. All right? Why is Novak mm, balling this? Yeah, cancel culture. <laughs> Why is Novak sitting in the park hotel? All right? Why? Compulsory sitting down there. That's the same hotel that Ambassador lodged in years back, right? And paid fantastic amount to be there, right? But they converted section of it into something else. Why? Because of statement of faith. Statement of faith. So get ready, brother, brothers and sisters, for you to be disliked by some this year. Hallelujah. And the fact that you are being disliked by them shouldn't bother you at all. What matters is, is the Lord pleased with me? All I say here is enough to be cancelled. I've been cancelled from many places. <laughs> I've been cancelled. I've been cancelled from many places. But you know what? I don't care. We are thank you. We are we are cancelling the to go. <laughs> I just don't give a boot. I don't care. Not even the least. I am what God says I am. I am who God says I am. I am doing what God said I should do. And I am having the testimonies that God has given to me. And nothing can stop the door that God has opened for me. Nothing can close that door. I will always walk into that door. Hallelujah. I don't care. We need to come to that position in life. Where we are no longer trying to please people. Where we are not living our lives. Trying to please the next person. And please the next person. And please the next person. Because some will still, be dis will, will still be displeased. Another scripture, Matthew chapter 11, from verse 16. Matthew 11, from verse 16. I just want this thing to soak. Jesus said, but whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and call, calling unto their fellows. That's kiddies like themselves. Playing around, having nothing to do. Verse 18. <clears throat> Keep going. Okay. For John. No, give me verse 17. And saying. So the kids sitting around and saying. We have piped unto you. And you have not danced. We have mourned unto you. And you have not lamented. So we tried to get you to do this. You didn't do it. 
we tried to get you to do the other one. You didn't do it. Then look at verse 18. For John came neither eating nor drinking. And instead of calling him a holy man for fasting, what did they say concerning him? They said he has a devil. He didn't eat, he didn't drink. He was doing a lot of fasting, him and all his disciples. So they said he has a, de a demon. Verse 19. But the son of man, that is Jesus himself, came eating and drinking. So he changed the approach. John the Baptist refused to eat and drink. He ended up being beheaded. The son of man came eating and drinking. And look at what they said concerning him. Behold, a man glutinous. <laughs> and I'm trying to pronounce it nicely, you know. This is Australia, so we have to, otherwise, in some other country, we say gluton. <laughs> Give it some vibe, you know, glut, glu, <laughs> gluton, <laughs> glutinous. And a wine biber. That's a dead drug, he's drinking too much wine. A friend of publicans and sinners. They called him a friend of tax collectors, that's publicans, tax collectors and sinners. Thieves, rogues. And then Jesus said, but wisdom is justified of her children. How you know wisdom is in the product of what that wisdom has, what that wisdom has produced. You know wisdom by its product. We'll get to counsel sometime. You know the wisdom behind the counsel that you are given by what results from that counsel. What is the product of that counsel? There are some things that sound nice. There are some things you are expected to do. But what is the outcome of it? What will it where will it take you to? What will be the spiritual result of that direction upon which you are headed? What will happen as a result of it? That will show you whether that thing is actually wisdom or whether it's actually foolishness. The things of God will always produce a good life for you. Hallelujah. You will always rejoice at the end. Doesn't matter the challenges you go through. At the end of the day, there will always be celebration. Glory to God. Wisdom is justified of her children. Romans chapter 12, verse 18. Romans 12 <coughs> and verse number 18. Bible says, you know, these are scriptures that you find some people quote and say, oh, uh, this means you got to be good and you got to please everybody. But look at what the Bible actually says. It says. If it be possible, he qualifies it. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, as much as it pertains you, or it concerns you, or your role in it, live peaceably with all men. He didn't say live peaceably with all men and just stop there. He qualifies it. He says, if it be possible, because he knows it is not possible. And then he says, as much as it concerns you. So in other words, you are not the source of the trouble. They are the source of the trouble. Yours is just to live out the life of grace and glory that God has called you to. Hallelujah. You just live it out. But then if someone decides to stir up trouble for you because you are living out the life of grace, uh, of grace and glory, then don't worry. You have played your own part. It's the person's business how the person reacts. You just say what you need to say. You just say, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. I love God. And I'm living my life for him. And if somebody gets offended, that's the person's business. The Bible says, if it be possible, as much as it concerns you, live peacefully with all men. Glory to God. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Bible says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. There is always a reaping day for every believer. Hallelujah. Every child of God, there is a reaping day. The Bible says, as long as this earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. All the good things you are doing, you are going to reap the harvest. Can somebody say amen? amen. Shall reap the harvest. Now, those you have helped at different stages in life, some of them may not remember you. Some of them may not even care. Some of them might have even started saying nasty things about you. Don't worry. The Bible says, don't be weary in well-doing. Hallelujah. 
at the end you will reap. You will benefit from your good works. You will benefit from it. And it says, if we faint, then verse 10. As we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men. When the opportunity is there, he says, do good unto all men. But then he specifies, he says, look, the people that you should be more concerned about blessing are those who are of the household of faith. That means you are not just trying to please everybody. If there are some people that you should be concerned about, and in fact, where your concern should come up as a, as a Christian is if those in the house of God, all of them, with the exception of none, no longer like you. Aha, then you know there's, there, there, something may have gone wrong somewhere. But in as much as those who are of the household of faith, their love towards you is unwind. Never bother about what the world thinks about you. Hallelujah. Never bother. Never bother. You just keep doing good as you can. Just keep blessing people's lives. Sometimes you have the opportunity to give something to somebody. Give it to the person. Doesn't matter if the person turns around tomorrow to say something nasty about you. If they could say something nasty about Jesus, you will not be any different. But remember, reaping day is coming. Hallelujah. You are sowing your seed. Reaping day is coming. Glory to God. So don't try to please everybody. Don't try to please everybody. This year, don't join the head mentality. No, now in people's emails, they put in it, after they've written their names now, they put bracket, she, he, her, his, theirs, they. I hope you haven't joined them. You don't. You don't. You are who you are. You are neither she, nor he, nor they, are, nor they, nor them. Those are men's representation. Of, if, if there's anything you write underneath there, preferred pronoun, Jesus. That, when, when the email gets to somebody, the person will just run crazy. <laughs> preferred pronoun, Jesus. Saint, Christian. Ah! Lagabaye! Ah! Ah! Prefer <laughs> yes, if anybody writes to me, Lege Baya, I know what to write back now. If the person put prefer pronoun then he, she, her, him, I will also write back and put my prefer pronoun Christian, Jesus, God like, full of glory, praising God, glorifying God. Hallelujah. Right, that, those are my preferred pronouns now. It's not a crime. It's, I'm only expressing myself. Mm, that's my own culture. Glory to God. God learn to be wise. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. They query it. You say, ah, no, everybody's expressing their own preferred. So I'm also, that is my own preferred. So don't try to please everybody. Just do what the Lord has asked you to do. Then listen to the voice of God. God will talk to you. You are his child. You are his love child. He loves you. He loves you. Men may forsake you. God will never forsake you. He genuinely loves you. He said, he's the one who said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. You know, sometimes a husband and a wife might make that commitment. You, we are together all the days of our lives. We will be together a challenge might come and one person might say mm, mm. don't hate the person forever the person is only behaving as the person is not meant to behave doesn't mean you be you hate the person forever after all abraham and sarah did the same <laughs> glory to god don't hate the person for that but understand something there is one who will never leave you he will never forsake you. He said it and he meant it. Even unto death. He meant it. He's the only one who has said that. And he keeps his word. Sometimes you might find a woman might tell you. Oh you know what you know what. But when something pinches her. Sometimes divorce starts in the labor room. <laughs> Glory to God. I hope I'm not spoiling anybody's day. 
Hallelujah. When something starts to pinch, you know, that's, you know, until, you know, it's easy to tell somebody, I will love you forever when there's food on the table. When there is stark hunger and it's life or death and something is really choking you bad, bad, that's when you hear the person say, God, food, oh, come on, shift. I don't know why what you are doing here. I'd be like, I wonder, is it not me, sweet? Am I not the sweet, sweet, <laughs> the sweetest thing? Hey, go and get me water. I need water. Water is what I need now. You know, I, I said this is the truth, especially for those of you that apply to get married. <laughs> so, I'm just telling you the truth so that you can get ready. A lady is pregnant and she's walking by the shopping mall. Suddenly, there's this smell that just comes. Mm, mm. And she says, there's this specific food I want to eat. And I want to eat that food right now. <laughs> now, now, now. What is the food? One food from the village in one country in, in Chile. And she wants to eat that food now. And she needs it. She wants that food now. <laughs> And she's almost dragging your cloth and telling you, I want that food. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> and you are like, what sort of madness is all this now? <laughs> what just happened to you? Glory to God. <laughs> what just happened to you? <laughs> and it almost ends up in tears. It can be sushi that she just wants. I want sushi. <laughs> sushi. I, I really need this sushi. I need this sushi now. <laughs> and you post that moving around the whole center looking for sushi. Sushi, 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 sushi. So happy that all the sushi shops have closed. I say, okay, if there's no sushi shop, if there's no, okay, can we get to a Chinese restaurant? You go out, oh, even the Chinese restaurants, they are not open at this time of the day. This is only 8 a.m. in the morning. I said, okay, where can we buy the sushi? Because I want the sushi. And then by the time you bought the sushi, only one bite is what will be taken. <laughs> Suddenly, the taste has changed. It's no longer sushi, it's now Nando's that is needed. <laughs> So you move around your whole morning. You've spent it going around from what? <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor Tony is not telling you of his story. Oh. I'm only telling you that it's important. At such a time, listen to the voice of God. The voice of God will tell you, calm down, calm down. Calm down. Because you just want to burst at that time and say, ah, bad enough. You know what the Lord will tell you? Cool down, cool down, cool down. Nine months will soon be over. Just be patient. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen to the voice of God. All the time. When you listen to the voice of God, your life becomes sweet. Challenges that will tear people apart become things that boost you up. Many things that would have caused you to worry become things that bring laughter to your mouth. Because you are listening to the voice of God. And then you don't miss a step. And even if you took the wrong step, just like Joseph was about to do, even if you take the wrong step, because your ears are attentive to the voice of God, God steers you back to the right path. Because you are ready to listen. But if you are not the kind who can listen, that's when you go on that pathway and it seems as if it is right. And the head will urge you on. You know, people, people urge people on to destruction. That's when the voice is louder. When they see you about to crash, they say, yeah, go, 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 go. Have you seen all these people chanting when you're about to do some dangerous stunt on uh, what they call this word, uh, this social media, TikTok. If you're about to do one very dangerous stunt, you know, that you are trying to jump and you are going to land that with the back of your head on the ground. You see everybody gather, yeah, 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 yeah. By the time you, you are gone, you are, your brain is no longer working properly, they step aside and continue with their life. Don't listen to the voice of them. Listen to the voice of God. That voice that will lead you on the path of righteousness. That's the voice that will lead you in peace. That's the voice that will lead you onto testimonies. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then, Number three, in a new dispensation, visualize. Visualize. 
When you get into a new dispensation, learn how to visualize. The Bible tells us, give me 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, in scripture, he is a new creature or a new creation. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Then he says, all things are passed away. He has entered into a new level. And what's the first thing? He says, behold. That means see, visualize. All things are become new. This is the reason why, you know, sometimes some Christians, they, they, they are like, I've gotten born again, but things have not changed. The reason things have not yet changed is because of you. Things have changed, but you haven't seen it. The Bible says when you come to Christ, you are a new creature. All things are passed away, but you have a responsibility. It is not God that is going to start seeing for you. It is you that has to open up your eyes and begin to see. So he tells you, behold, all things are become new. You start to see new things around you. You get to a new level, you start to see new things around you. You start to see the glorious things that God has placed around you. You start to see how to operate in this new level now. You are no longer keeping your eyes on the old. You are keeping your eyes on the new. Hallelujah. You've got to behold. You've got to see that all things have become new. That's your responsibility. If you can't see it, can't get it. What you see is what you get. The extent of your vision is the boundary of your blessing. Those are the words of our man of God. How far you can see. God said to Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, that I have given to you. How much can you visualize? If you are still seeing yourself that in 10 years time from now, you are still a renter, renting and begging landlords around the place, that is what you will get. But if you can start seeing yourself as a landlord, or as a landlady, owning houses, not just in Australia, but in different countries of the world. That is what you will get. Hallelujah. Because your vision will propel you. That's why the Bible says, without a vision, the people perish. They cast off restraint. They don't know which direction to go. So they start going in all types of directions. Then they are tossed to and fro. Why? Because there's no vision. Your vision will guide you in life. When you can look and you see, this is where I ought to be. This 2022, this is what I'm going to accomplish. I'm going to finish up my studies successfully. I'm going to get this finance. I'm going to walk in peace. I'm going to live a life of glorious health. I'm going to live in abundance. Then that's what you get. But if you cannot see anything, you've got no vision, then automatically whatever Satan provides for you is okay. Refuse to live that sort of life. Hallelujah. From the day I entered into Australia, I saw success. I saw, I, I just, I, I saw it. I said, Lord, I, I've come here to succeed. I didn't come here to fail. I didn't come here to beg nobody. I'm not a beggar. I said, I will never beg. I will never go begging in my life. And truly, I have not. I never started begging from place to place. No, never, 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 never. Doesn't mean there were no challenges. But I had my vision. I had what was, what was propelling me was there. So despite the challenges, when the challenge came, I wanted to knock me down. I said, no, I cannot be knocked down. That, that, that is where I'm going. That's where I'm going. If I found myself lying on the floor, I picked myself up and said, it's time to go. That's, I'm going to accomplish that thing. I had a vision, a clear vision. From the moment I said it, after I said it and I heard, I, before I came in, I never knew anything about permanent residence. Or see, I just came here to get, I, I said, oh, thank you, Lord. At least I've escaped. And I've landed. I'll get my PhD here. I'm on a scholarship. Woo! Thank you, Lord. I've escaped. So four years, I will be on this team. And I will get my PhD finally, finally. Then suddenly I heard about permanent residence. And I said, permanent residence? Somebody said, that if you get your PR. Hey. I said, hey, PR. Eh? Oh, PR. Oh, PR, okay. So I started doing my research. PR, PR, permanent residence. Oh, permanent residence. I said, permanent residence, how? Oh, like this, like this, like this. I said, what qualifications are required? Like this, like this, like this. I said, okay, like this, like this. Like, oh, I said, okay, all right, fine, fine. I then put it on my agenda, permanent residence. 
So while others were now, their eyes were on PhD. How do we get the PhD? After three years, four years, five years, who we'll apply for the PR, all my peers in the classroom, they were busy talking about, ah, you know, hmm, five years, I get permanent residence. Six years, I just get permanent residence. I work for one year in case I get an employer, in case I just, in case I die. I said, mm -mm, mm -mm, no, 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 no. I move faster at the speed of the spirit. <laughs> I move faster at the speed of the spirit. So where I all list out all the permanent residents for me, I put all of them out. So while they were busy writing their thesis, I was busy dealing with permanent residents. No wonder within six months, glory to God, had been obtained. Without a vision, the people perish. What can you see? As far as your eyes can see. What can you see? And when you want to really see and you want to focus on your vision, you can't be wasting time with people who have with discussions that don't make sense. You can't be spending your time talking. Don't let me speak pigeon. You can't you can't be spending your time doing ta 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 with people that 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 are not on that line. Kings mix with kings. Glory to God. Royalty mixes with royalty. You find all these people who are who are ranked, ranked, I put the term ranked, as successful people on the earth. Look at the kind of people they surround themselves with. Experts in different fields. Look at the kind of people they have. Look at the kind of meetings they attend. I've been looking at the life of that man, Bill Gates. The most loved man in the whole wide world. At the moment. Glory to God. Particularly in Africa, is very, very well loved. They have been demanding his vaccines and everything. They've been collecting it and doing what they need to do with it. I was looking at his life. When he was younger till this day, some of the things I observed were consistency in dealing with the right people. Consistency in dealing with the right people. Consistency in attending meetings with the right set of people. Every day chats out on the kind of meetings he attends with people. So such a person, you don't find him in the pub, just chatting away with people. And a lot of all these other characters that you find, you don't just find them anywhere, chatting with everybody. They are focused, they are targeted, they have a vision. And that vision drives them every day. Doesn't matter who hates them or who likes them, their vision propels them. Jesus Christ was that way. He had his clear vision. The salvation of mankind on the cross. And so nothing would stop him. He said, I must do the works of him that it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I'm in this world, I am the light of the world. He had something to accomplish. And my question to you, 2022, what do you want to accomplish? Hallelujah. What do you want to accomplish? What's your vision? What have you outlined? This is what I'm going to accomplish. You know, this is what I'm going to accomplish. And a little word of advice. Don't let your accomplishment depend on others. Oh, glory to God. Am I talking to somebody? Don't let your accomplishment depend on others. Because those others that you are depending on may not be there. So don't let your accomplishments start to depend. Oh, without, I, oh, I'm going to accomplish this vision. But I need brother this or sister this to join me to accomplish that vision. Brother this and sister this might not be there because they have their own vision and their vision might not be your own vision. Glory to God. I'm talking to somebody. Anyway, leave that matter. Don't, don't say, oh, I, without this person I cannot. Imagine. The house of God is the way it is today. If we were depending on certain people in times past, we wouldn't be where we are. Because sometimes there are people who may come to your life for a given point in time. After that time, they've gone. Not because they don't like you, but because they have to move on. They've got other visions. They've got other things they need to accomplish. So if your own vision was attached to them, your vision crashes. So when setting your vision, don't let your vision depend on somebody being there for you. 
There are some who have said, oh, my, I, I will accomplish my vision when I have a husband. Maronde si bragira bahai. Isaiah chapter 43. Let's leave that matter. <laughs> Let's leave that matter. You may not accomplish your vision. Because when the husband comes, the husband has his own vision. No? He has his own plans. Which might not be your plans at all. That's how some people in some other country, I, I know of a few. They, they said, oh, I will go to school. I will attend school when I'm, when I'm married. Then the husband came and married. After marrying, they expected the money, that there will be enough money to send me to school. And the man said, no, 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 this remaining money to recover the amount I have spent on the wedding. So I want to invest in business. Okay, okay, no worry. Okay, after the business will make money in about one year, then I'll go to school. The second year, business was not doing so well. The third year, business did well, but the husband said, we need to expand so that by the time you go to school, you can come back to manage the business. It's been 15 years now. Never gone to any school. Vision cry. In fact, the vision has now changed. The vision is now make food for my husband every morning and take care of the kids. And she's there reproducing. After another one year, another tummy. Bam. Vision has changed. May your vision never crash in life. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't let your vision depend on somebody. With or without that person, you are going to accomplish your purpose on this earth. Hallelujah. Can somebody say amen? You'll accomplish it. What if you always depended on your husband and your husband suddenly passed away? Does it mean you are dead? You are finished? No. You're going to pick up your life. What if it so happened that, oh, it depended on the wife, and suddenly the wife kicked you out? Does it mean life ends? No, you've got to pick up and move on. Let your vision be dependent on God and God alone, and it will surely be accomplished. Glory to God. Isaiah 43, verse 18. Visualize. But now, thus say the Lord that created thee. Verse 18. Remember ye not the former things, Neither consider the things of old. So forget about the past. Don't consider the things of old. Verse 19. Then he said, Behold, see, I will do a new thing in your life. Can somebody say amen? amen? Now it will spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. Somebody said things are getting tougher. God knows how to make a way for you in the wilderness. Can somebody say amen? Where there's no pathway, where it seems as if there's no pathway for you to get the PR, where it seems as if there's no pathway for you to build a house, seems as if there's no pathway to the marriage, there's no pathway to the, no, God knows how to make a way in the wilderness. Seems as if there are no resources. Everything is down. He says, I will create rivers in the desert. I know how to channel the resources in your direction. I tell you, money knows your address. It knows your address. He knows how to bring the resources. If he can do it for me, he can do it for anybody. Glory to God. Rivers in the desert. He knows where the finances of this nation are. There's a lot of money flowing around, I'm telling you. Plenty of it. There's nobody that should lack. Just start from where you are. It may seem like it's a little thing now. It may seem as though, oh, what you're just doing is just very small. But don't worry. The Bible says a little thing shall become a thousand. A small one shall become a mighty nation. It is the Lord to perform it in his own time. Those who you find are billionaires today, they started with a little amount of money. So you too, you are getting their glory to God. As long as this earth remains, seed time and harvest. This is the time of your own small beginning. This is your own seed time. Your harvest is coming. Can somebody say amen? amen. And it's coming this year. Can somebody say amen? amen. It's coming this year. It's coming this year. Makes a river in the desert. Seems as if there's no money to pay the fees. But there's so many billions moving all around. There's no money to pay. He knows how to channel the river. I love something about a river. A river, you can't stop a river from moving. You can't stop a river from... That's why I said, and rivers in the desert. In the desert, there's dry land. It's as if nothing is moving. But he says, I will bring a river to the desert. The river will flow in the desert. If there were a barrier that was standing before the river, 
What does the river do? It will ignore the barrier and just move by the left, by the right, separate itself and just still move around it and keep moving. That's the kind of river God is bringing in your direction. No barrier. The finances that God has planned for you in 2022, before you enter 2022, they are locating you. Glory to God. They are locating you. And nothing will be able to stop it. Nothing will be able to stop it. If it requires a change of laws, God knows how to work it out. Amen. Those who planned the pandemic never expected to be where they are today. Omicron has made them to bust out. Now they are opening borders. Because how many cases can you count? 20 something thousand in a day, 50 something thousand in the next one, 100 and something thousand. This thousand, that thousand. Rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. So be counting the Omicron. Formerly they were standing and counting. One, two, three, five cases. Fifty. Quarantine all of them. Their household all under arrest. Now they have seen 50,000. So with 50,000, how many will you quarantine? The whole state should just quarantine. <laughs> quarantine. But they continued with the madness. And as a result of that, now they see that, oh, there's no food for us to eat anymore. The shelves are empty. The toilet papers are disappearing once again. This one is happening. No more meeting in this one. Hey, this TV. Hey, this one. Hey, that one. Okay, okay, okay. You know what? Let, let's just change the laws. Let's change the laws. You will continue. You will continue to change the laws. Keep changing them. Because all the counsel you had in times past were the counsel of foolishness. Yes, I hit of. <laughs> The councils of foolishness. They had listened to God's people from the start. They wouldn't be where they are today. Nation would not have been ravaged. And all the closing of churches. Oh, church can close, but the park can remain open. And this is what I, I, I watched. I watched what happened in New South Wales with uh, Hillsong Church that they put on the news. And, you know, they were having their lovely youth camp. And uh, the youths were busy worshipping. And then you had one lunatic senator. Lunatic you are, lady. Because that's how you've decided. By their fruits, we know them. Yes. Okay? That's what the Bible says. So if you show the, if you talk with the voice of a lunatic, definitely you are a lunatic. Think like a lunatic, talk like a lunatic, behave like a lunatic, accuse like a lunatic is what? A lunatic. Right? So that's why I said, that's what you are. Okay, so, say, oh, ha, ah, the law says no concerts. There shouldn't be concerts. And here they are, they're having a concert in the Hillsong Church. You don't know the difference between concert and worship. They are two different things. Very different. Concert and worship. When we see us gather together and we are singing and praising God and jumping and dancing, it's not because we're having a rock concert. We are worshipping. Very different. And somebody needs to tell you, I know you guys have threatened Brian Houston. But you can't threaten me. I can't be threatened. Glory to God. And that's why don't come near me. Hallelujah. <laughs> because I will talk. You know, Brian can keep quiet. Because, you know, he's got, <laughs> he's got a lot at stake. But I have nothing at stake. Nothing at all. I've been an area boy since I was. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing at stake at all. <laughs> nothing at all. I can wear short sneakers and stand in front of parliament. I no shame. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I have nothing. <laughs> uh, that's why, you know, back in those days in, in Nigeria, they would go and arrest all the, when, when, during the military uh, yonta, uh, or we used to call it junkta then. During the military, they would go and arrest all the big men that were talking, etc., but there was one guy they hardly ever arrested, unless the matter really got out of hand. His name was Fela Nikulak Bokuti. They didn't bother arresting him. <laughs> they just left him alone. Because <laughs> they know, okay, if you arrest him, he will still talk. If you tell him, keep quiet, he will continue to talk. So you just leave that kind of person alone. Another man, they, they, they would arrest him and release him, was uh, a lawyer they called Ganifa Wemi. So they would, they would arrest him. He would, from the, even from the, from the prison, he's talking. <laughs> when he comes out, he would tell them, I will still go and talk. They say, don't talk. If you talk again, you come back here. They say, thank you. I'm ready to come back here. But I will still talk. So when they know that you are, you are not that kind, they just leave you alone. Satan has respect for such people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tell the boss, Satan will respect you. You will never be quiet. 
Let us be quiet. Let's keep talking. Glory to God. Visualize. Rivers in the desert. I have my vision. Nothing will sway me. Last point today. Rejoice. When you enter into a new, test, a new dispensation, rejoice. Celebrate it. Celebrate it. If you don't want to celebrate with people, that's okay. But at least celebrate your new level and testify about it. Celebrate and testify. They overcame him by the word of their testimony. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. Psalm 1 to 6 from verse 1. You rejoice. Enter into a new level. Rejoice. Celebrate it. Celebrate. God has done this thing for me. I'm going to celebrate it. Every time God does something new, something wonderful for me, I come back home with a pack of wine. I will come and pop, pop wine at home and relax. At least a little time I'm, I'm in the house. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, La <laughs> we were like them that dream. You know, this that time they'll be looking for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, La Gabaya. The Bible says, the stone that the builders rejected shall become the chief cornerstone. That is your story. That's your story. After a while, at the, the epidemiologists and all of them, they are talking of, they are opening their mouths now to talk. They are, they have, they have been talking. Starting from Robert Malone that they tried to censor to, to all of them. They are, they, they are talking around different places. That those who have been jab, jab one, two, jab three, immunity has gone. Boom. Why? Because they are being jabbed, not against the current strains. Of the virus but against something else that has already passed and so while you will get stronger and stronger because you are in the lord for those in the world they get weaker and weaker the pharmaceutical industry never came to help anybody they came to make money and so they don't come to come and give you something so that you can just be well and never come back they are good businessmen. That's why they've been making billions of dollars. And they are still making billions. They give you something so you can get addicted to it. So you jab, you jab, the same thing, 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 the same thing. Not a new strain that you are being jabbed with. Still the very old thing that has passed. And that's why you find those who are being jabbed, they are, they are even, according to the doctors, they are even more susceptible to the new strains than those who never received any vaccine at all. They have become more susceptible. That's why you find they are the ones who you find that are actually getting sick. But they are not, it's not, they, they now run the counts, they say, no, 60 something percent non vaccinated. This one, uh, blah, 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 blah. Go and look at the real data. Those who you find that they say, okay, this one has passed on, etc., 70, 80, 90. The young people that are sitting down with challenges in the hospitals, they are the vaccinated. And it's because they've been jabbed with the same thing over and over and over again. Now because they have someone in Queensland who is not a part of their cabal. The person is telling everyone, in fact it's good for you to actually get Omicron. Have an Omicron party. So if there's anybody who's got Omicron here, please you can let us know so that we can have a party with you. So our systems can become even stronger. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? I'm telling you some basic facts. Basic facts. But of course, in their, in their ignorance, they brought all this stuff so that people can get it and get it and get it and get it. There's a way that cement right onto a man. But the end thereof is destruction. That's why the Lord cautions you away from the head mentality. You step back. But I love something. I love something so much about us who are Christians. Doesn't matter what you have gotten yourself into. In as much as the power of the Holy Spirit is at work in you, you will get stronger. Hallelujah. Why? Because your life is not dependent on, you are not born of flesh and blood. You are born of the Spirit of God. Your life is acquired by the Spirit of God. Your life is controlled by the Spirit of God. 
So for men, when men are cast down for you, there shall be a lifting up. Hallelujah. Know what the Lord said? He said, you shall, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. Whether it's something, it, I love what Pastor said many years back. Pastor said, whether you drink it in water, or you drink it through the blood, or you drink it through the air, however you consume that deadly thing, as far as it concerns you, it shall not hurt you. So what they planned for the destruction of your immunity, La Bozege Barabahaya, it will work together for your good. Can somebody say amen? It will work together for your good. Just trust the Holy Spirit with your life. Trust him with your life. And ensure that you visualize the things that he has said before you. I've said before you an open door, which no man shut. Rise up on your feet. Let's speak in other tongues. Kora baliga bahaya. Mala bashakaya. Labo sebon de sigra bosha. Liga barabaye. Raba so de liga baha. Maraba shata liga bahaya. Parado shaha. Laba so te liga barabaye. Rede bosaha. Palibo shata liga bahaya. Malabo savrandes. Rodobo so do riga badege bosahaya. Raba shakaya. Palabo sata liga barabaha. Palabo shaka dege bosahaya. Liga barabaye. Raba so te riga balabosahaya. Nothing shall sway us from our vision. Marco Raba Liga Baha. Paro Shaka de Kebose te Liga Baha. Raba Shaka de Kebosa. Liga Bara Baha. Palaba Sota Riga Bashamande. Raba Sote. Laro Shaka Balibosa. Riba Shaka Liga Bara Baha. Raba Sote Riga Basaha. Balabosa de Bondes. Raba Shaka Liga Balebonde Saroshke. Le bosete riga bahaya, pala bosata rabaha, raba shaka liga bara bahaya. As you are speaking in other tongues, let those visions of what you have outlined for 2022, let them begin to come into your consciousness. Kala bosahaya. As you are speaking in other tongues, let them roll by. Lero shaka baya, riba shaka bara baha. Labo sata riga bashamande, raba sote liga bahaya. Rabba Shaka Liga Bahaya, the visions of your successful graduation. Rabba Shaka Diga Baya, let them roll by. Legebo Sahaya, Rabba Shaka Riga Baya, write that vision, make it plain. Soak it, Wero Shakaya, soak it with your words, soak it with your tongues. Karo Shata Baragabatekeha, Laba Soda Riga Bashaya, that vision of a child in your household. It's coming to pass. That vision of your finances, that extraordinary surplus, it's coming to pass. That vision of a successful marriage. It's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. Maraba shaka teke bahaya. That vision of a successful business. Kado basege bosahaya. Libaro shaka bara bahaya. Bala basota riga bahaya. It's coming to pass. Maka teke bosahaya. Nothing will sway you. Nothing will stop you. Nothing will obstruct you. Kado shakaya. The rivers in the desert. The finances required. Kero shaka baya. They are flowing to you without any barrier. Baro shahaya. Laba sota riga bashata bozaha. Laba so bariga bahaya. Palabo shakada gabara bahaya. The pathway towards his accomplishment is set out a line before you. Labo satara gabahaya. Palibo shatara gabahaya. It's you and Jesus. One with God is majority. Kalabo sadabara gabahaya. Balare Shataragabaha. Anything that stands against it will crumble before you. Kalabo Sataragabahaya. Balabo Shataragabahaya. It may come against you in one way. It shall flee before you in seven ways. Kalebo Shakabahaya. Laba Sodarigaba Shabaligabaye. Laba Sada Bosete Rigabahaya. Balabo Satara 
Rabatene Bosahaya, Balige de Bose de Boshaha, Liga Barabaye, Raba Soda Riga Baye, Laba Soba Liga Baraba, Alaba Sata Raba Shahaya, Laba Soba Liga Bashahaya, Balibo Sada Boshaha, Manda Zide Bonde Zige Bonde Saroshke, Raba Sota Ribosaha, Liga Basoba Ragabaye, Malabo Sata Ragabaha, Balabo Sata Rigabaye. Alabo sata ragaba ha, libare shabo sati gaba lebo sahaya. Alabo sata ragaba ha, that vision of a healing. Labo sata ragaba ha, raba shakari gaba ha, is coming to pass even now. Lege bo sada bo shahaya, raba shakadi gaba ha, and you will testify. You will testify. The Lord has done great things for you. Yes, Kero Shakabaya, Rabba Soda Rigabaya, and we are glad and we rejoice. Kalebo Sabaragabaya, Libaro Shada Baragaba Zegebo Sahaya, Rabba Soda Rigaba Shaha, Libaro Shada Bosa de Bosahaya, Rabba Ragabaya de Bosahaya, Labba Soda Rigabaya. Oh, paro sado bashaka teke baye. Oh, 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 it's you I live for. Oh, 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 it's you I live for. Hallelujah. We may be seated. Glory to God. If you are here today or you are connected and you haven't yet declared Jesus as Lord over your life, it's important for you to do so. It's important to do so. What are you waiting for? Jesus said you must be born again. It's not enough to say, Lord, I go to church, Lord, I love Christians. No, you've got to be born again. Those are the very words of Jesus Christ. So if you'd like to be born again today where you are, you can just put your hand on your chest and repeat these words after me and mean them with all of your heart. Say, oh Lord God, I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe Jesus died on the cross to save my soul. I believe Jesus rose up from the dead and is alive today. I declare that Jesus Christ is Lord over my life from this day. I believe by faith that I have eternal life now. I have eternal life now. I am born again. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you've just said that prayer, want you to know that God heard you God heard you and you are now a child of God and would also love to hear from you so that we can connect you to this family and we are present in several places all across the world so you can reach us using the details that are showing on the screen right now send us an email or go to the website christembassy.org.au forward slash welcome fill up the form there and click submit once you do we will receive your details and then we'll get in touch with you hallelujah praise god let's take our tithes and our offerings 
let's worship the lord with our substance if you're giving via cash there are envelopes available for you if you're giving via f post there are f post machines behind and if you're giving online you can use you can either do the qr scanning thing oh that the talk show today was amazing that was beautiful brother josh and uh, brother neville that was amazing very beautiful session so you can scan the code to take you to our website and you get our details their bank account details and also there's a direct payment link that's also on the website that you can use glory to god few announcements tonight we're going to be having praise service with our man of god that will be 2 a.m melbourne time glory to god it's going to be fantastic so we encourage you yeah that is displayed praise night with pastor chris so we encourage you to join in and just enjoy the praise and worship that will be coming out from there it's going to be awesome as always then we have midweek service on wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m and australia praise will continue on thursday from 6 to 6 30 p.m then men and women's fellowship follows shortly thereafter on thursday from 7 till 8 30 p.m youth fellowship also is on saturday from 4 to 5 p.m then we have our special uh, reach out australia activities that will be on the 26th of january glory to god it's going to be amazing so make sure you are a part of it make sure you are doing something to reach out to reach out and join us in what we are doing as well glory to god so don't just do your own thing on your own there are plans we have on that day we'll meet here right absolutely we'll meet here and then there are several things that will happen there are t-shirts how much are the t-shirts twenty dollars are you sure thirty dollars absolutely i i could have this no t-shirt is going for twenty dollars these days all right except the salvation army okay so i would have expected to hear fifty dollars glory to god for the t-shirt so try and get your copy of the t-shirt it's going to be really fun the way they have organized it I, i've been told it's going to be really fun so get your t-shirt pay the thirty dollars for it it's not too much but if you need assistance Mm, you can never beg hallelujah praise god tell your neighbor if you need assistance you can never beg there is grace enough for 30 dollars times 10 hallelujah you get, don't just think about how to buy for yourself it's not about how to buy for others that's where the grace is it's called overflowing grace hallelujah so 26 there's gonna be we're reaching out and we also have our australia day service 6 p.m on that day because it's a wednesday so that is going to be our australia day service and it will also double as a youth service so it's going to be a really power pack day a really power pack day so you don't want to miss it hallelujah let's pray over our tithes and our offerings father in the name of the lord jesus we thank you for the opportunity for us to give in your house lord we give in faith acknowledging lord that you are our source and because you are our source our finances will never run dry we prosper without limitations thank you heavenly father none in this none that is connected to us in this ministry shall ever walk in poverty we will always walk and live in abundance thank you lord for making rivers to flow in our direction rivers of finances for us and not only for us, but for those who are connected to us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for extraordinary and ever-increasing prosperity. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
mouth It can speak in tongues It can move mountains This my mouth, this my mouth, this my mouth Everything that I say Surely comes to pass This my mouth, this my mouth Sing I'm anointed I am blessed I carry power Carry power In my hands, in my hands I'm anointed I am blessed I carry power Carry power In my hands in my hands sing oh 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 is my life, is my life Victory, winning all the way More than a conqueror Is who I am, is who I am I'm anointed, I am blessed I carry power, power In my hands, in my hands Where she says, I carry power. We do have muzzle. Her hand, I don't think it was so big. What do you think? She do her hand. Eh? I carry power. <laughs> Can we see your power? Show us your power. No, not like that. Sister Beauty is, Sister Beauty is doing her hand small. I say, I carry power. Let us all see the power. I carry power. Do it like this. Like this. I carry power. Hallelujah. Those of you in the king, those of you in the congregation, can I tell somebody I carry power? I carry power. Do your hand like this. Do your hand like this. Carry power. Glory to God. Oh, you have to demonstrate it. Faith is the demonstration of the word of God. So you know. Yes, our man of God said, when you are worshiping God, and there's a difference, there are different kinds of songs. When you are worshiping God, you are addressing God. You know, so there's reverence when you are addressing God. But when you are singing a song like, I'm anointed, I am blessed. It's not a worship song. It's a song of demonstration. It's a song of faith. You are declaring, you are making a statement of faith. So you carry power. If it is me, I will, that's when I will bend down, baby. <laughs> Glory to God. And as I'm dancing with that song, the angels will be dancing with me. And the whole of heaven will be dancing. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken. His body was not broken for him. The Bible says, He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made or become the righteousness of God in him. So he said, This which is broken for you. He went to the cross not for himself. Jesus was not a martyr was a sacrifice he sacrificed his life he died so that you might have life the 
Bible says he became poor so that you might become rich. He took your sickness. He bare your sickness on the cross so that you might become healthy. That's the gospel of substitution. He was abused so that you can be honored. So he said, eat this body in remembrance of me. Remember what I did for you. Remember that I took your pain away and I gave you joy. Remember I took your sickness and I gave you health. I took your failures that you might succeed. So I'm going to send the bread to you now. When you get it, just hold it and we'll break it together jointly. forget you were crushed for our transgressions we will never ever forget you were bruised for all iniquities we give thanks to This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do show, proclaim, showcase, announce the Lord's death until he comes. tells us about the potency of what we are doing 
that's fine verse 27 it tells us wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink it drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body for this cause many are weak and sickly and many sleep Father we thank you for your blood that was shed for us on the cross your blood that wiped away all iniquity took care of all sin not only sin but also the effects the outcome of sin which includes incipient death for the wages of sin is death the product of sin is death death in all its form the form of sickness father we thank you for as we drink this cup today righteousness reigns in our lives sin has no dominion over us and if there were anything in our bodies that was not meant to be there that thing is wiped out even now in the name of the lord jesus thank you lord for total restoration total healing in the name of the lord jesus amen you can take and drink now. We remember when we break that bread that you were broken for us. You were broken. You were broken for us.
thank God. Thank God for the new dispensation that you have entered into. Thank God for new levels of grace and glory that are manifest all around you. Thank God for his wisdom that you have received. Grace heaped upon grace. Wisdom to function. Listening to the voice of God. Change levels. Leaving old baggage behind. Your vision is ahead of you. Nothing can sway you from your vision. You rejoice and you testify concerning God's goodness all throughout this year. Joy fills you up. You are strong for the joy of the Lord is your strength. In your home there is eternal joy. Joy all around you. Yes, your house is full of joy. Your life is full of joy. As you study, you are rejoicing. As you work, you are rejoicing. Everything about you will turn into celebration. For testimonies about, testimonies about like never before. Of your increase, there shall be no end. Karo Sahaya. Libaro Shaman Zaro Shkadi Bahaya Palabo Sabaragabate Kebo Sahaya By the power of the Holy Ghost You go forth, you are bursting forth with joy Bursting forth with praise Bursting forth in His goodness Kora Baliga Bahaya And no weapon fashioned against you will ever prosper Any tongue that rises up to speak evil concerning you we cancel that tongue in the name of the Lord Jesus. Karo Shahaya, Libaro Shabaragaba, Tegebo Sahaya, and any pit that has been dug for you to enter. Manta Siga Batosa Gabaye, Laba Sobaragaba. Those who dug that pit, Egebo Sagabaya, they are the ones to find themselves inside the pit. Labo Shaka Bahaya and you will be skipping by from grace to grace and from glory to glory. Karo Sahaya Libaro Shaka Bara Bahaya Palabo Sataraga There is a shout of victory ahead of you. Malabo Sahaya Libaro Shabaraga Bahaya Yes, there's a shout of victory ahead of you. Kalabo Sahaya Rabba Shaka Degebo Sataraka Bataka Baha let on this, let on this, let on this, let on this. Karo shakabara bahaya, palaba sota ragabaha. Yes, release words onto your week. Kadebo shahaya, raba shakabala bosa ha, parado sata ragabaha, lero shata baragabaha. As you are speaking, as you are speaking, roads are being cleared. Karo shakabaya. As you are speaking, angels are being dispatched, sent forth. Kero all throughout this week testimonies upon testimonies upon testimonies upon testimonies nothing is big enough to stop it no government is big enough to stop it no devil no demon is big enough to stop it no adversary no enemy is big enough to stop it, Kalo Sataragabahaya, Libaro Shakabahaya. You have the victory. 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 Roba Sekebo Shahaya. Can somebody shout glory? Hallelujah. Oh, Paro Sada Bahaya. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us now and forevermore. Surely His goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives as we continue to dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Can somebody shout glory? Say, neighbor.
you have the victory you have the victory his testimonies all throughout this week hold your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor we have reason to celebrate you and I we are in a family of testimonies our clouds say neighbor our clouds they are full of rain we are emptying ourselves we are emptying ourselves we are emptying ourselves we are emptying testimonies can somebody shout glory hallelujah tell three people keep celebrating Thank you.